Today is Monday. It is Veterans Day here in the United States. Thank you to all of those troops who have served our country. And tomorrow, evidently, it's going to snow here or something. That's really fun. But of course, we have video game news to talk about, and there are some stories floating around that I definitely want to cover. First off, we're going to highlight a brand new ROM hack for one of my favorite games of all time that has me giddy with excitement. Then we're going to talk about some fake Nintendo Switch games that are popping up on Amazon. What's going on with this situation and what you can do to avoid that. And then finally, Kojima just pretty much took a dump on a lot of U.S. gamers. And there's definitely a lot of things I want to say about this situation based on his quote. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about what's going on in the world of video game news. One area of retro gaming that I find absolutely fascinating has to be ROM hacks. I like to go to the website romhacking.net and sometimes I'll just sit there and peruse the site for like an hour or two just looking at all these crazy ROM hacks that people have done with retro games. People get really creative with these old games and breathe new life into them. Adding in new areas, adding in new enemies, doing color palettes, even simple translation issues. But it really is just goes to show how passionate the retro gaming community is. Now I don't really have a whole hell of a lot of time to play a lot of ROM hacks, but this new ROM hack that just came out definitely has my interest and I will be making time for this because it's based on one of my favorite games of all time, that being Super Mario 64. This brand new ROM hack is called Super Mario 64 Land and holy crap, this looks absolutely amazing. It looks like Super Mario 64 2, the sequel to Super Mario 64 that a lot of us have always wanted. Now this story has been reviewed and covered by other websites so don't think I'm like blowing the lid on this and that the Nintendo Ninjas are going to swoop in and cover this and get rid of this because of me but yes this looks absolutely amazing it is available for a free download as of right now you might want to hurry because nintendo ninjas are going to probably get involved in this but just look at it like there's new areas there's new environments there's new enemies it just looks absolutely amazing how much polish went into this game i'll have a link in the description box down below to the original trailer of this game that also has the download instructions like i said it is a free download you might want to hurry up and jump on this before you know nintendo Nintendo swoops in and tries to take this down or anything, but I'm really impressed with this. I have to tip my hat to the creator of this because it just looks absolutely amazing. I will be downloading it after I do this episode and hopefully I'll have a chance to play it. Maybe I'll do sort of a let's play with it to show you guys some of the new stuff in the game, but I'm definitely very excited for Super Mario 64 Land and I think a lot of Nintendo 64 lovers will be excited for this as well. Next up, one of my favorite places to buy stuff is, of course, Amazon. You can buy everything from toothpaste to cereal to video games to crappy video games that you guys are making me review because, I don't know, you hate me. Just Dance 2020, coming this week. Yay. But of course, one of the cool things about Amazon is, of course, you can buy actually good games off of there. And that's where things get very fun. Now, of course, Amazon is the main website, but within the website, there are third party sellers that are selling things on there as well. Maybe the game was a limited run. Maybe it's a collector's edition of the game. There are lots of reasons that there are third party sellers on Amazon, and usually it's a very good experience. But one individual had a very bad experience picking up a Nintendo Switch game off of Amazon. And I definitely want to highlight this situation because I feel like if it's happening now, in just little bits, I feel like it has the potential to happen more and more. So an individual picked up Iconoclast, which was a limited run Nintendo Switch game. If you're not familiar with limited run games, basically you can pre-order the games when they go up on their website, and then once they are gone, they are mostly gone. So you have to sort of go to a secondary market if you want to get into collecting limited run games or just owning some of these games to begin with. So an individual went on to Amazon, found a third party seller that was selling the game Iconoclast that was released by limited run games for the Nintendo the Switch. When they purchased this game through Amazon, the game came in and it, there, there was a big problem. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't what he was expecting. The artwork on it was very shoddy. There was no inner stuff that was supposed to be within the game. And most importantly, the cartridge was a fake cartridge. It did not work. Now, this is a very scary situation because if this becomes more prevalent in the video game marketplace, you could see more and more people running into this situation. Now, hopefully Amazon will rectify this because obviously this was purchased through Amazon. Amazon, much like you would purchase something through eBay, there is a lot of buyer protection. But still, it could be a big inconvenience and it could be something that we could see end up flooding the secondary Nintendo Switch market. What's to say that people aren't going to make a counterfeit Super Mario Odyssey, sell it for like $25 or $30 on eBay, and then try to run away with your money? So it's a very strange situation, honestly. You know, we have to give the benefit of the doubt to the seller. Maybe they are a big seller where they don't realize all the stuff that's coming in. You would assume that a Nintendo Switch game wouldn't be a counterfeit 
counterfeit thing. But obviously, since Nintendo Switch stuff is being counterfeited now, it is something that sellers need to be on the lookout for. Always make sure you're looking at pictures of things when you're buying things on the secondary markets like Amazon and eBay when it comes to purchasing uh, video games. You have to be very attentive. You know, look for things like cartridge boards if we're talking about retro stuff. If it's modern stuff, compare it to the actual games that have come out. Don't just go nilly dilly into this and purchase these games. I do hope everyone comes up smelling like roses in this situation. I hope the seller, it was just an error on their part. They didn't realize it. And then I hope the buyer gets their money back or at least gets another copy of the game. But still, it's definitely something that you need to be on the lookout for because I feel like it has the potential to get worse before it gets better. And finally, Death Stranding. Wow, that's a that's a topic that a lot of people are talking about. Obviously, it is a very polarizing game. Now, I can't say if the game is good or bad or anything like that because I have not played it yet. My copy will be here tomorrow as long as the snow doesn't get in the way. But I do plan on checking out the game. I really just kind of wanted the baby statue. I'm not going to lie. But it looks like an interesting but polarizing game. And we, of course, did a look at the reviews for Death Stranding, why the game was getting nines and tens from a lot of places but the words and the context of the review didn't really seem to match what the review score was. People were saying the game was boring. It was tedious. The story was kind of all over the place, but it's a great game and you should play it. And it's like, well, why should I play it? You haven't really done a good job of conveying that. Well, Hideo Kojima actually did a recent interview where he spoke about the reviews that were given to his game and the critical reception. And wow, he, he needs a PR guy. I think a PR guy would be very good for Hideo Kojima because what he said upset a lot of people. And I can see why. So Mr. Kojima said the following about reception for Death Stranding and reviews for Death Stranding. I must say the game received rave reviews, especially in Europe and Japan. Here in the United States, however, we had stronger criticisms. Perhaps it is a difficult game to understand for a certain type of critic and audience. Americans are great fans of first person shooters and Death Stranding isn't one. It flies higher. It flies higher. I always try to create new things and disputes and discussions are fine, but it must be said that the Italians or the French have a different artistic sensibility that allows them to appreciate this, very, this kind of very original product, not only in games, but also in cinema. Really? Really? All right, first and foremost, I am Italian. If you couldn't tell by my beard and my chest hair that sometimes sticks out, I am an Italian gentleman. I think if I showed this video game to my Italian grandmother and said, hey, grandma, take a look at this game and tell me the artistic design of it and tell me about the story of this game and is it a great game? I don't think her viewpoint would be very different than my viewpoint. You see, what you're doing here, Hideo Kojima, is you're pretty much essentially saying that US critics and US reviewers are dumber than other regions and they can't appreciate your vision. Let's be real here, Mr. Kojima. At the end of the day, it is a video game, and I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to make video games be seen on the same medium as things like movies and music, where there is deeper stuff as opposed to pop stuff or big budget action flicks that are just popcorn flicks, and I appreciate that, but all because somebody doesn't understand your artistic vision for a game doesn't necessarily mean that they're just a stupid individual who doesn't understand it. There are people who just don't like certain types of games, and when you're looking at a game like Death Stranding, obviously this game relies very heavily on story. Looking at your track record for stories in video games, that's been something that's been a bit spotty. When you look at things like Metal Gear Solid 2, 3, and 4, some of my favorite games of all time, I really appreciated those stories. But to say that there wasn't batshit crazy moments that really didn't make sense in those stories would be a bit of an understatement because there was. All because I felt that this aspect of the story wasn't a good aspect of the story doesn't mean I am dumber than another reviewer. It just means that my tastes are a bit different. And you're talking about reviews for your game. Let's be real here, Mr. Kojima. Your game reviewed very, very highly. It's still one of the highest rated games of the year for AAA experiences. When you're talking about things like first person shooters, first person shooters, yes, are very successful in the United States, but that's in terms of game sales. When you look at reviews for first person shooter games, it's not like they're getting a pass all because it's a first person shooter. A lot of games that I play have a great story, but have weak gameplay. And there's games that have a weak story, but have great gameplay. At the end of the day, a video game for a lot of people is a gameplay experience. And all because the gameplay in Death Stranding is a bit mundane at times doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad game, but it does mean that it's open to criticism for things like this. All because people don't like the game or don't understand the vision of the game doesn't mean that they are stupid. Maybe they use entertainment as a different way to expand into their realities and escape from their reality. Some people like big budget things. That's why when you look at some of the highest grossing movies of all time, they are action flicks because some people just like to get away from 
from reality. All because you made a bit of an obscure game with some new design elements and just sort of a feeling of isolation doesn't mean that someone is stupid because they don't understand it. It just means that they have a different preference. So to sit there and say that people like Italians and French people are of a higher artistic merit just makes you look like a snob who sniffs his own farts all the time because he's just putting himself on this high pedestal. We get it. You have an ego. That's okay. But when you're sitting there throwing around things and shoving your ego in other people's faces, that's where it becomes a problem. So Mr. Kojima, I got to disagree with you on this. I think it's a very shallow statement and it really just makes you look like an asshole. Whew. All right. So, uh, you know, I, I guess I had a few things to say about that Kojima statement because I just kind of disagree with it. So let me know in the comment section down below what you feel about everything. Are you going to check out this Super Mario 64 ROM hack? What do you think about counterfeit Switch games popping up on the eShop? And of course, what do you think of Mr. Kojima's statement? And as always, folks, thank you for checking out this video. Be on the lookout for my Just Dance 2020 and Jumanji reviews this week because... Yay. And as always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.